From September through December, I'll be visiting every one of our senior centers, really to get an understanding from the folks who are a part of our senior recreation programs. How is the facility? How are the services? What do we provide? What could we be also providing that we don't presently? What's happening in the neighborhood? What are the concerns about what's happening in the neighborhood? How has public transportation been affected? And what other concerns might they have when it comes to issues like public safety or even neighborhood concerns of anything that would be happening in the streets around them? I've decided to do a little tour with every senior center this next few months and basically get a chance just to talk about what's happening in the city, what you're seeing, what concerns you, uh, what's happening right here at, at this senior center, and what are some of the things we could be looking at as we start to invest back into our own buildings. What types of services do you see or maybe you don't see that you wish that we had? Our goal is real simple. Our goal is we want to create a community center people want to come to but we don't want you to just come here and have a lunch. We want you to come here and have a better life. And so I need help into trying to figure out what that means. And then also on a, on a bigger scale, what's happening in the north side? What are you seeing? What are the changes that are happening? Some that you may like and then some that may concern you. And just to have like a little dialogue before lunch to be able just to get firsthand from you what's happening. So uh, we started out uh, in Glen Hazel and had a nice conversation there. A lot of the concerns there were around transportation, some of the bus routes that are being changed with the Greenfield Bridge being closed, a lot of people feeling they're gonna be isolated. We went out to Greenfield, where as you can imagine, they had some of the same concerns about the, the traffic programs, but a lot of concerns about the building itself, of where they're at. There's no air conditioning downstairs, so it's, in the oven, it's like an oven in the summer, and then during the different parts of the day, um, some of the upgrades that were needed at that facility. But uh, this is our first time in Northside, so this is the first chance to hear what's happening on this side of the river and to get a chance to, to start that dialogue. It's not one and done. This isn't just come by one time and we'll take care of it, but to start to get an ongoing dialogue. So, what's that? Upgraded. Upgraded, yeah, yeah. Upgraded. So what specifically? I mean, in Greenfield, I was told about the bathrooms. That was the one thing. Yeah, the restrooms. I mean, the facility itself, it seems cool. In the winter, is it warm? Yes. So the, the HVAC isn't a big issue, but it's the upgrading of the basic structures, the, the, the bathrooms, the... The, the whole building. We're in the basement, yeah. so we're getting the stuff that's coming from upstairs. Yeah. You know, I am afraid we have mold, which should be checked. If we don't, that's one of them. Mm -hmm. needs to be checked in all of the rooms because we're all sick. Yeah. And we don't need the extra stuff to make us worse. So we can do an inspection to make sure that it, it, at a minimum there is no mold. That's, that's a given. Okay. Right. And we'll do that. Right. Anything else? What about the services? I mean, the services the city's providing. It was great to hear from you guys earlier about you know how Duquesne University is partnering with us. Are there other ways that uh, we can provide different types of activities or anything that you might need? And just be honest. We could use some activities here. We don't have anything. So. Very few. Okay. What are there activities that we have right now? Well, we have um, BCAC Healthy Pool Games. Yep. We do have our bingo. Um, we have craft classes. We started something new with nail art. Mm -hmm. um, there is lunches on Fridays. We do shopping. Mm -hmm. um, there's bingo on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, our advisory council. We just also started um, doing our ice cream socials. Try to do them once a month. Um, we just came off of our center picnic. Yep. And of course, we collaborate with Duquesne University. Um, we collaborate with the Children's Museum from time to time. So, as far as our activities, we're basically doing, you know, what what, what we need to do. Yeah. So, we, do we have any healthy living, like uh, either, you know, the chair aerobics, the senior yoga, the uh, well, do we have the BAC comes in the fall and springtime. We do line dancing. So okay. We do that. Yeah. Because I don't want you guys sitting in chairs. And when you come here, I want you to do some Tai Chi. I want you to be able to, no, I'm not kidding though. You know, Arthritis Foundation will tell you the best way to be able to 
take care of arthritis isn't through pills. It's by getting that body moving and getting those joints moving. Mm -hmm. Chair aerobics okay. are great. Yeah, yeah, there's another thing. We have um, at Duquesne, one of the faculty now is also a yoga instructor. Yeah. And she does yoga with some of the faculty, but she has also said to me that she would be willing to come to some of the centers yeah. if you all have the interest in it to learn yoga. And just so you know. Didn't we have yoga or yeah, was that Tai Chi? We have Tai Chi. Yeah. So this is something that we want to be able to bring too. And on an ongoing basis. The other thing, music, live music. I mean, getting the opportunity to have local young musicians being able to come down and have some, some, a nice little bit, bit of a entertainment during lunch, yeah. something else we're looking for. Yeah. One other thing too, uh, and we just put this in part of our uh, technology plan, we're going to have every senior center wireless. We have it. You got it already? We have it. Okay, you're, you're right. <laughs> then we're gonna start to work with you to teach you how to use the computer. And then that way to be able to communicate with grandkids on Facebook and everything else. We're gonna have classes to be able to teach you and we're gonna have what we call, you know, bridging the digital divide. Now my, my mom's 88. She's never used a microwave or a bank machine or she's just she's not, you know, she's her, she was the first person born in this country in the, from her family. I can't get her to use a computer. I tried, but it's just, but that there is a way to get seniors to work with computers and so quickly though. you know what though but there will be someone here to help you so it won't be that you'll be on your own they'll be there with you to, to help you to get online and then to be able to do what it is you want to do and you know what you're going to be in doing mm -hmm. you're going to be skyping with the grandkids seeing them oh, live on the computer you already do it all right i'll do it but the kids do it for me my niece and all they give me like they all live in different cities yeah you but you <laughs> Yeah. There was a company that came over from London. Yeah. And we did a feature on all of us, a couple mm -hmm. of our ladies, yeah. and we actually got to Skype with the senior center in London. So this company whose name is Breezy. Yes. And I came here to tell you that they're locating their North American headquarters in East Liberty or Uptown. We're not sure, but they're going to be coming to Pittsburgh to. And why they're called Breezy is they make it so that it's a breeze. And the, the reason that they created it, the CEO, young man, uh, his dad never used a computer and he wanted to make it so that it was easy for his dad to do it. So it's just hitting certain buttons. It's very easy to do. Breezy. Breezy. Yep. So we'll be working hopefully with them too to bring that program. So what about the neighborhood? I mean, you know, we're gonna have a press conference down the street at two o'clock about violence. And this is happening all across this country. Uh, when we look back, in a couple of years, we're going to say 2015 was the year of violence. In Pittsburgh, our homicide rate is down, but our shooting rate is up, which means that if a bullet travels just a quarter of an inch further, our homicide rate could be up too. And um, I, I don't want you, when you're coming here or at night, to ever feel scared. So what, what can we do, or what do you see, or what are the, some of the ways that you feel that we could be doing more? More police patrols. More police patrols? Do you see many of the officers on the bikes or walking? Mm -hmm. In what neighborhood do you? I'm up in Perrysville. Up Perrysville, yep. They, it's a big hill, but they do get up there in their observatory hill too now. They've been starting to ride the bikes. We've seen some of the spillover happening and happening up in there as well. We actually experienced down in this area, the, the lady that was knitting, she was one of our seniors down North Avenue, yeah. down by the Commons area. I'm not familiar with her, but so, okay. Uh, a couple weeks ago, um, the bullet actually went in her window and hit her above here. Yep. Um, didn't shatter anything, but it's still in there. She chose to have the non-surgical way because it would have been you know, harder for her to do anything. So mm. she's one of our regular members here. So she was actually affected by the balance. Yeah. So, you know, so it affected all of us. Here, two things. Number one, most of the time, the people that are the victims have been involved with the crime before. So there's usually a track record where they were involved either as a victim before or as a perpetrator before. That, that's most of the time. There are some times that it's an innocent bystander, but 
I, I hope you guys understand this, especially when it involves young people or seniors, and then it affects everybody. And it affects the police officers themselves too. It's, um, it's something that everybody feels that there has to be more of a call to, but at the same time, we've got to get more support from the community. It can't be that nobody saw anything happen. We've got it, and that only happens when we build the trust back with the police. So once we get that trust, and I hope you'll start to notice, especially out here with, with zone one, a lot more police are showing up at the meetings, not being there for the safety purpose, but to be there as part of the community. We started having coffee with the cops in, in the north side where you can go and sit down with the commander and her officers and just talk and have coffee. And what we'll start to do next year is start to bring the officers to the rec centers and the senior centers to be able to just talk directly with you and to get what you're seeing and what you're hearing and let them use that as information to get the bad guys. Our, our senior citizen, I uh, still work with Fowl. Yeah. And we have the, uh, the Port Authority has the little, you know, sitting place out there for the sit away from the bus. They have taken and knocked out the windows. Uh, we don't know who it is. Mm -hmm. but every time, every time they knocked out the windows, the air comes through. Sure. So we need to get that done before winter. Yeah, we need to do something. Yep. Steel Workers Tower. <coughs> yep. And just uh, let's contact Port Authority with it and ask them. And if they say that it's not theirs, then we'll just work through Public Works. Mm -hmm. We'll get that. And we need that done before winter. Yep. I was just listening to the comment on. You all say if you know something or you see something to report it and tell the police or whatever, which people on our side say that's being a snitch. And then also, when sometimes people do probably want to go and not reveal who they are and tell the cops they know for a fact that this is the person doing the shooting or they know who the people are, they retaliate and then people get hurt. Yeah. I mean, do they ever do anything that is really discreet without the whole nation knowing about it? They do. And I say the person's name. Yeah, no, and, and there's ways to be able to report it without even having to give your name or uh, to be able to do it. I'll give some forms that will be here um, and they don't ask for anything, not a, not a name, not a phone number, not an address, and they take it serious. The, the investigators take it serious. I know a, a lady who lived up on uh, the Hill District and her daughter was to be a witness and say who these people were, and they not only shot her daughter and killed her, but they shot her also. And this person that I'm speaking of had to leave Pittsburgh altogether, and they were supposed to be being protected, but they apparently didn't get protection if the daughter got killed that was supposed to be a witness. I mean, it's really, really hard. Very familiar with that case. Yes, and you know who I'm, yeah. you know what I'm saying. It's horrible, and it's not the only case, but at the same time, for the most of the people who give information, there's a firewall between them and the information that no one would ever know that the information was given. Most of the time, the leads that our police officers have come directly from the community. We've got to rebuild that, that bond. We've right. got to give people, right, trust, you're right. And it's, uh, it's gonna take some time to be able to do that. One of the things we just started talking about yesterday was maybe working with our churches and being able to let people go to the churches and then the churches coming to us because there is that trust between the community and the churches and the churches want to be involved more in reducing violence and this might be a good way to be able to do that and then you have a real wall because there is no connection whatsoever to the city but i have to talk to the ministers about that if they're willing to take on that responsibility i have a feeling that they are yeah going to church i don't have a car and i have depend on Port Authority or ask us to get around. Yeah. Sometimes my neighbors and friends have cars, but you know, you can't depend and use your neighbors and friends all the time because they have things of their own to do. Yeah. And another thing, that, that, that bus off, that off, bus off, they keep knocking it out, keep knocking the window out every time it's been repaired. I don't understand why 
I said keep knock on that. I have no idea. I mean, that's. That I said it's kids. I don't think it's kids, though. So. Yeah, but I don't even know I who. I've seen their blame on the children, and it's not always them. Yeah, I don't know why anybody would want to knock out windows out of a bus stop. And I wonder, uh, and I have, I go to choir rehearsal in the evening, mm -hmm. and uh, I have to stop going to my choir rehearsal because if nobody comes pick me up, because um, my son don't want me out there by myself waiting on the bus and something happens to yeah. me. So th th this, that's one of the concerns. They've, they've replaced it many times before, but this last time they, they haven't done anything. They just leave it there. We'll, we'll fix it. Um, how many people ride the bus? <laughs> Most people, right? How's the service been? Well, it's good. It has been? Mm -hmm. Not over, uh, the buses haven't been overfilled? No. It's okay. Yeah. Has it been, uh, they're, they're eliminating the stops over here? Oh, it's good. But we have to walk now. I'm at Perry Plaza. Yeah. And this stops a block before the hospital up there. And if you want to be, we have to go around the corner. It used to stop on the corner. But uh, it's always a lot of walking, but they're doing a lot of remodeling there. Yeah. Whatever. So, but otherwise, it's pretty good. It's been good. Really yep. Good. Yep. I don't have any bus service where I live. Where's that? On Spring Garden Avenue. That doesn't go up at all? It doesn't go up there at all, no. Uh -huh. it's Was there a bus line before? I mean, I know, I remember Troy Hill. I heard, yeah. I heard it. So where's the closest place that you go to? I don't take the bus. I okay. Go there. Okay. Because I'm assuming at the bottom of the hill, down by, you know, as you get down to the bottom of the Spring Garden, that there would be some service down there. No, Nothing. There isn't anything. Years ago, Mr. Mayor, the uh, Port Authority did away with that. Mm -hmm. And they did away with the Perry Fail to find you coming down in the central area where it used to be. Mm -hmm. Now it's just on North Avenue. It had stopped a lot of our folks coming to the senior center because it's so far of a walk. Yeah. So we tried to, you know, access OBT, that sort of thing. Yep. Is this the closest senior center to Spring Garden? No. Uh -huh. It is? Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's a very valid point. Yep. Uh, anything else? Yep. Our neighborhood store at Charles and Perry's building uh, tried to rob. If you've seen the man with the sword, yeah. he pops off here now. Yeah. And today when I rode the bus, I saw the, the door window all smashed. So I don't know if that's new or old because I haven't been out for a time. So we had a couple incidents that have happened up there, and I'm sure you know. In the the, the rough part about it, you know, descriptions and other things, they're younger and younger, the, the people that are involved in this. And um, we do have cameras, just so you know. I mean, and the, the, the office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they will. I, I just, uh, it's not just here, it's the, but it's younger. It's younger. I mean, it was what happened in Carrick this summer was kids. What happened over uh, recently with a spat of armed robberies over in East Liberty were kids. It's um, it's what young teenagers. What about on the south side where they had all them cars that had the windows and windshields smashed in? Yeah. They spray painted because I seen it on the news. Was that young kids? Too? Not sure. Teenagers? Not sure. It's a uh, lot of cars, about 15 of them, just yep. messed up. Yep. They yep. had a career on Benton Avenue because my cars uh, yeah. was affected by it. It was about seven cars in a block that it tore up this year. A lot of times your car insurance is going to be covering all of that. No, yeah, the deductible, and sometimes you have to pay out of your pocket, so you won't have to pay the deductible just as Five hundred yourself and get the windshield fixed. It's just terrible how everything is. Yeah. It, yep. And you have to answer your doors. You see where the lady answered her door and that man pushed in and he asked for her her cell phone and her car key. Yeah. And went on off with her key. I just want you guys to know though that is so so rare that that people 
rarely, rarely, rarely just go to somebody's door and, and do that. I mean, and not with violence. If they're gonna do something like random, they're gonna try to rob you, uh, not violently, but you know, and they always get caught, the ones that pretend to be the gas company or something like that. I tell my mom this all the time, I'm gonna say the same thing to you, don't trust people. <laughs> when somebody comes to your door and it seems like they're, ask for ID. Make sure that they show you that they are from the gas company. Make sure they show you they're from the phone company. Whatever they're saying that they are, they have to carry identification with them. If they say it's in the truck, say thank you, come back another time. Just be polite and they'll walk away, but don't trust people. You have to have your screens locked and they push fancy. Yeah, they, they're very, very, very rare are they violent. Mm -hmm. They're just probably addicted to pills mm -hmm. and they're trying to get their fix and they're looking to see if they can get inside and look around and get something they can sell and that happens rarely too and when it does they usually do a neighborhood and we usually catch up to them that same day or the next day because they're not they're 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 addicted and they're not thinking straight so they don't they don't think this stuff out but rarely does anyone ever come in and cause harm Usually the gas company or the light company will send you a letter yeah. that you're gonna have somebody. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but just, anyone calls you on the phone and they're offering you something that's too good to believe, it's not real. Yeah. Yep, nobody's, nobody's calling to do that stuff, so it just, I don't like it when anyone takes advantage of our seniors. So uh, if anything like that happens, always call 911. It may not seem like to you that it's a, an emergency, but if something looks wrong in your community, if something just doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. So take that precaution. Call 911 and say, I just want to <coughs> leave a report. There was somebody walking door to door. He didn't have ID. He said he was from the gas company. They'll send a car down. Mr. Perduto, yep. when we watch the news and we seem like the incident where their lady was 86 years old, so her daughter sat and she accidentally left her purse at that Walmart. How come none of those videos of the people come in very clear so they can just identify <coughs> exactly who they are? I don't know. I mean, it shows the lady, yeah. you know, she went in the purse, took something out, which they don't know what she took out, yeah. and then she returned the purse to the, you know, people at Walmart, and then the daughter is on the TV saying her mother wants her $550 back, but they say, do you see this lady and you know her to, to, to let someone know who she is? But the picture don't come in so clear, just a, a profile the lady she has on glasses. Yeah. You know, the no. camera should take it clear enough to see. Well, you'd think so, but maybe they're not buying the expensive cameras. Right. So I'm talking about like the Walmart. Is yeah, I agree. Walmart. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just one thing with that too. I mean, I I watch the news too. The first 15 minutes, shootings and weather. That's all it is. I mean, but that's not all that's happening in the city or in this region. It's just, you know, there's an old saying in the news business, if it bleeds, it leads. So they end up showing that stuff in that first 15 minutes. I don't even watch the first 15 minutes of the news anymore. But there is so much other stuff happening that's good that doesn't get reported. So you may have heard about this summer, we employed 2,000 kids. 2,000, I mean, two years ago we did t less than 200, and then we bumped it up to 600, and then we got Jerome Bettis and a whole bunch of people to help us raise money, and we were able to pay 2,000 kids to go in, uh, we call it summer of earn and learn. So they were getting paid to learn too, all summer. So one group goes to the shelter and they find homeless children. And these are kids that are teenagers. And they take them and they partner them with a tech company and they teach them how to make web pages on the computer. And then in the last two weeks they have entrepreneurs come in to teach them how to sell the web pages to small businesses that don't have a web page. And the kids got paid all summer to do that. Homeless children. Right. We had the University of Pittsburgh's uh, music department opened up its doors this summer and they had professors teaching kids who have an interest in voice how to be, you know, better and how to and they were paid. The kids were paid. And for so many of those kids they never spent a day on a college campus. And they leave at the end of the summer and they say, this is where I'm gonna go to college. I mean, there's so much good that's happening. We opened up the pools this year. We said, if you're a kid, you don't have to pay. 
you know, it, it, then just uh, that should never be a barrier. Mm -hmm. And now Director Griffin of Parks and Rec has started a program that by second grade, working with Pittsburgh Public Schools, we're gonna teach every kid how to swim. Every kid in the city. But those are the ways that we're gonna get to the violence. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do it, and one young girl, one young girl in Beltsuver told me this, and I'll never forget it in the rest of my life. It was very, very wise. She's probably around 15, Corey, would you say, that young woman? Uh, yes. She said, you can't make choices for me. I'll make my own choices in life, but you can give me opportunities. Yes. And that's the key. Yeah. So we start giving these kids more opportunities, we'll start seeing less of them that are breaking up bus shelter windows. We'll see less of them that are on the first 15 minutes of the local news. We'll see more of them that we'll be reading about that graduated from college and did great things. And our job is to give them opportunities. Same with you. I want you guys to have the best years of your life now. And I want to have opportunities here to be able to do that. Thanks, guys. Thank you.